Ladies and gentlemen, it's Dusty Thunder, and we have one of these for you. Spicy story. Burns going in and going out. Title of this story is, Am I the Astronaut for Telling My Mom's Family I Don't Owe Her Because She Had a Gender Disappointment? Oh, boy. My mom never wanted a boy. She wanted girls. Apparently, her dream was to have four daughters, but she had me, 16 male, first. I've seen photos and videos of the day I was born. She cried hysterically when they told her I was a boy. Then she refused to hold me. Red flagging right here. There might be cultural things where this is okay. Uh, In my worldview? No, no. After we were cleaned up, she cried about not using the name she had chosen and said she didn't know how to move on from it. All this was caught on camera. Eventually, my paternal grandma took me, and she was the person to hold me in photos and videos taken during the rest of our hospital stay. My paternal grandma was my sole parent figure for the first eight years of my life. She took care of me, and I spent so much time at her house. Sometimes I was there for weeks. Then she had a brain bleed and passed away. So I was left with a mom who wanted girls and not a boy and a dad who wanted to be a provider and nothing more. My mom had my sister, Lily, two years after me. So mom got her girl and Lily got all of her attention while I got grandma until I was eight and then nobody. My mom and Lily are super close and mom adores her. Lily got the bigger bedroom. She gets the gifts. She gets all her favorite snacks. She gets to do all the extracurricular activities she could ever want. And her birthdays are huge parties with huge gifts. Christmas, she gets at minimum 25 gifts from mom alone. Mom typically gets me one. Never anything I'd like or want, but you know, it's the thought that counts, which is zero. My mom's family don't act too interested in making up for my lack of paternal love. And in the last couple of years, mom and I have argued more and I give her a hard time. Dad's never around to give him one. But mom, if she wants to ignore me, then she could hear how shitty it is. And if she wants to treat my sister like a perfect angel, then she can hear about it. Mom has mentioned how I ruined her dream of four daughters. We were at mom's parents' house Friday, and mom gushed about Lily doing good on a project and the scooter she got Lily to help her get around easier. She got Lily a custom helmet and a personalized lock for her scooter. She couldn't stop talking about it, and I told her she really does love to shower her favorite in gifts and praise. My mom's family told me I should take it easier on her and I and said that I should understand we had some little troubles because of mom's gender disappointment. I told them I don't owe her shit because she had gender disappointment and that I didn't ask to be born to a mom who only wanted daughters. They told me I lacked adult understanding and compassion. Am I the Askonaut? No, you don't lack adult understanding and compassion. They are lacking adult understanding and compassion, pretending like your issue just doesn't exist. Mom, doing all of this in, in front of you and just, just, just waving it in front of your face and not addressing the trauma that she puts you through is the issue here. And, and now you're 16 there's this resentment that builds and builds and builds. Now, eventually, you'll be able to have an independent life, go no contact, and not have to to deal with her. But until then, having to be around it all the time, I'm sure, is really, really, really difficult. Urge you to talk to somebody about it. Because right now, the way that it's spilling out is spilling out with jabs. And while I understand and it's completely warranted what you're saying and what you're doing, you don't owe her shit. It's not productive. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't see what you're doing right now leading to any kind of solution path. It's it's not going to solve anything for you. Uh, if anything, it's just going to create more problems. I think a potential actual solution path would be some counseling, maybe independently at first, and then together with you and your mom so you can get through this if what you want is a healthy relationship with your mom. If, if you don't give a shit about a healthy relationship with your mom and you're like, you know what, f*** all this, then just wait it out until you can be independent and go no contact and then do that. But let's get Candy Thunder's feedback on this, ladies and gents, once again, the colorful, beautiful, spicy as always, Candy Thunder. Oh my yeah. God, it's Candy Thunder again. I'm actually, I'm going to disagree with you. Okay. I feel like um, at 16, like he's been treated like this his whole life and he sees his sister getting what he wants, which is a relationship with his parents. And he doesn't have that. And at 16, one, your emotions are all over the place. So um, someone needs to hold her accountable because her family's not doing it. Her husband's True. not doing it. The daughter's not doing it. She, she's just loving the gifts that she's getting, the spoiling that she's getting. And him throwing it in her face time and time and time again is going to take away the, well, I never knew something was wrong. You never told me That's something true. was wrong. You're No, this kid is saying, you are f***ing up my life. You are f***ing up our relationship. And I've got two years left and then I'm not a part of it. Like, that's what he's saying to me. That's what he's doing. Because this mom is, 
abusing her child. This <clears throat> is just f***ing abuse. But did he say that? That's that's where the difference is. I think if At, on if, the level of a sixteen year old, yes. If this was some kind of boundary that was like, here's what's going to happen if you keep doing X, uh, then that would be a different right. thing. But it's little jab, little jab, little jab, and I don't see that creating any kind of change. No, and I totally understand what you're saying. Like, just do what you have to do until you can be done Survive. with this family. Yeah, and I get that. But at the same time, if I'm only going to be here two more years, f- it. like I'm done. Like f- you, every every time you do something that you know is not okay, jab. Because at 16, like, and I'm trying to remember how I would have felt at this. Like, I would have been pissed. I would have been so hurt. And I would have been, I would have wanted what my sister had so bad because we all want that. We all want to be loved and cherished by our parents. Like, and to not have that. Like, his jabs, in my opinion, are like a cry for help. Like, he lost the only parent he had at eight years old. Yeah. And now he has nothing. And so it's like, this is what he has. And I and I don't know. Is it better to internalize it and keep your head down and move forward and just wait till you're 18? It's not better to internalize it for but, sure. Or is it better to just say what you feel when it happens and get it out and then leave when you're 18? Like, I was I was wanting to see, I was scrolling back through this to see uh, what mom's response was to this. Did she even respond? Oh, except- uh, so the family said that he should that he should take it easier on his mom because they had some little troubles. So way to minimize those aren't little troubles. That's that's life altering yeah. troubles. That's life altering trauma that this mom has inflicted on her child. I understand gender disappointment. I mean, I, honestly, I don't. I really don't get gender disappointment. I understand wanting a boy or a girl, especially if you have one or the other. But you get what you get. Like, and maybe that's because we tried like so hard to have a baby that I just don't, I didn't, it did not, I, it doesn't matter to me. I tried like both times I've had two kids and both times like worked really hard to have those kids. And so I don't, I mean, I, we chose, uh-huh. I mean, we had embryos, we did IVF, we chose the best embryo and it was a girl, but we had three girls and one boy. Like We so. actually didn't. Uh, we, we deferred we asked which the healthiest one that's, was. Well, that's what I was saying. We yeah, chose. We didn't, we didn't choose one based on. No, we chose healthiest. Anything and, other than health. And that was in it was a girl. But I mean, that was a 75% chance because there was only one boy. So, but I don't, I just, I don't understand like wanting a specific gender and then feeling like your life can't be what you wanted it to be. Like expectation versus reality. I don't, I want to understand it, but I don't know that I actually do. Mm. I think for anyone who wants a baby to hear this story is like <laughs> gut punch. Cause yeah. it's like, how do you have a child? How do you carry a child, birth a child? And then be like, yeah, I don't want it. Like, it's a, I, like I, how is gender yeah. the deciding factor in whether or not you're going to love and cherish your child? I, that I will never understand. And that goes back it's to, so, it's not fair. Something's wrong. If somebody has mm-hmm. that worldview and they feel strongly enough don't have to kids. not even be able to hold their own baby and to cry because th- not because not tears of joy, but right. tears of tears of disappointment right. when they had a healthy child. Something's wrong <laughs> there. It's not it's not OK. But but going back to you, OP, who, who first of all, you're going to deal with this for the rest of your life. Let's just acknowledge mm-hmm. that right now. Like even when you get out of this house, this is going to be a big part of who you are and what you struggle right. with forever. Uh, and that you're going to have a lot of complications around relationships because of this. So no matter what, you should be talking to somebody on a regular basis. Sooner or later, you're going to have to. So if you, the sooner you start it, the sooner you're going to start getting to a spot where you can have some healthy relationships. Yeah. Mom may be a lost cause here. Uh, um, I don't even know if you could convince her to to get help. Lisa, this Lisa said she wanted to play dress up instead of parenting. It's possible. And, you know, that thought that that also crossed my mind that. I see people want girls because they want to dress them up and whatever the case may be, but that all fades like that. They don't always want to play dress up like girls change just like boys do. I mean, they all have different phases and maybe boys want to play dress up like I don't I don't care. I don't care what my children play with. Like, I don't I don't we don't handle the gender things, but Prefer I'm, they not play with like matches yeah, and, knives and knives and stuff. But I'm saying, stuff, as far as kids and stuff go, I don't care gender wise. I don't care what who plays with what. It does not give bother Navy me. a marker uh, sitting in the kitchen. Yeah. Next thing you know, the cabinets are all colored. 